Enjoy all your favorite sports like never before at BetMGM. Sign up using code Hawkeye and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if you don't win your first bet. When you register with BetMGM, you'll get instant access to a variety of parlay selection features, live betting options, and the best daily promotions in the business. And with BetMGM at your fingertips, every play and every game matters more than ever. Remember to use code Hawkeye and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if you don't win your first bet. Place your money line, prop, or parlay bets with the king of sportsbooks today. BetMGM and GameSense remind you to play responsibly. BetMGM.com for terms. 21 plus only. Iowa only. New customer offer. Subject to eligibility requirements. Rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-BETS-OFF. At Parker, our purpose is simple. We want to make the world a better place. By working more efficiently. By using more sustainable practices. By developing better technologies. We keep moving forward. With each new idea, innovation, and partnership, we're one step closer to fulfilling our purpose every single day. To find out more, visit parker.com slash purpose. Parker, engineering your success. Sports are kind of back. Again, no intro, no music. Another episode of Hashtag Sinks Twitter Podcast. We're going to get it one day where we have the mega podcast. It's going to be Ryan, myself, Patrick Claibon, Greg Rosenthal, Kevin Patra. Like, we're going to get it set up. It's just, it's just hard. <laughs> like, I'm the one who's, who's typically organizing it. Patrick is a father and a husband, a newborn. Greg is a husband, two kids. I have a kid. Ryan, I don't know what he does. He hides murders in his house for <laughs> the first two hours when he gets home. And then Kevin Patra is in, in Central Standard Time. It's a mess, but we'll get it set up one day. But another episode of Hashtag Sing Twitter Podcast. Uh, it was supposed to be Patrick and Greg on this episode, but Greg had the to top, top out. So we still got Patrick on from NFL Network. He just actually finished a hit. <laughs> we just saw him all suited and booted before he turned his video off. How you doing, Clavon? <laughs> I'm doing great. Y'all almost saw me get naked, you know what I'm saying? Like, because it's hot in here, man. Like, it's, that's it is people... warm. So, like, um, you know, I, I don't really have a lot of options, right? Like, maybe the people with home cams, like Ian or Mike. Oh, I got muted. Uh, especially the people that don't live... Um, in um southern california that, that right? was on me i was trying to meet myself because i'm drinking water i ended up <laughs> muting you my thoughts no nah, it's all good man um like the people who don't live in southern california right so they they may have more space <laughs> right? um for for me I, we just have to put the camera and all the equipment in the baby's room and there's this big window and so like the sun comes in there i can't have the window open and it, it just you know, I try to get the fan going, like do everything I can. But as soon as I'm done taping, I turn that hot ass light off and <laughs> I, I get naked, man. And, and in <laughs> fact, like uh, some of the, like my homegirl, Sarah, uh, works in production. She, she let me know one time. She's like, Hey man, I know this sounds weird, but, um, you know, after five o'clock, if your camera's up and, and you don't have any clothes on, you know, like, uh, somebody's going to see it. So, yeah. <laughs> So I was like, camera, noted. So y'all just got a hot camera there, just sitting there? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll send, I'll send y'all a picture. Yo, that is I'll, I'll send wild. y'all a picture right now. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me put this in a group chat. Yeah, it's, it's just there. I mean, I can throw like a jacket over it, but it's just it's just there. You know what I'm saying? Here's the thing. Like, you live, you live out like towards LA. It's like, I'm in the valley. Like, it's 102. Like, it is oppressive. <laughs> just, <laughs> just impressive man um <laughs> and i can't even like and then it's weird because a cali heat is different from like and ryan's not in in new orleans right now but like the heat that you experience in new orleans with the humidity that's a different level yeah. of just like 
your soul is drained when you step outside. Listen, when you get to the like the one hundreds, it's all it's just hot, man. Like you can't like you can, they try to say, well, it feels like this. It's hot. Like there's no, you know, special, you know, special category for it. It's just hot, man. Like you just it's just miserable. I hate it. Been living in New Orleans or in the Gulf South all my life. Never got used to it. I hate it. Like yeah. for me, I, I I get homesick, right? I, I'm home. I, I miss a lot of things about home, but I I do not miss. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. For those who don't yeah. know, I do not miss like getting the shower, putting on some deodorant, trying to smell good. You know, use some cologne. Like back in the day, uh, you know, it had that polo sport, right? And you go, <laughs> you go get in your car. All that shit is over. God. Like, God. It, it, it it didn't matter, right? I don't miss I don't miss that at all. Like it's, 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 it's different out here. I remember, you you know, trying to get like all fresh for a girl, get in your car, and like you said, like by the time like like you just like I'm just gonna be like sweaty and musty while I go pick her up. Like we yeah. we <laughs> the goose juice. Like you ain't feeling good at all, man. <laughs> um. So we we got Patrick on here. There's a lot of things that are happening in sports, just in general. Um, so if you're listening to this, expecting it to be a very, again, a very heavy sink steam podcast, like I'm, we're not going to talk about Nigel Bradham and and Benny Fowler signing. Like I, I, I don't let's have do it, it, man. <laughs> 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 because like, you, you like Benny Fowler is one of those names. It's like, oh, Benny Fowler's still in the league. Like, that's right? What's up. <laughs> exactly. Precisely. <laughs> not not going to wait. Nick Underhill already wrote expose on it like we can talk about <laughs> bigger picture stuff so last night was the restart of the nba in their bubble in orlando and i under i understand a lot of it is not as many teams are there only like the playoff teams or the teams buying for the playoffs um and and nba team basketball teams are just smaller in general but like i kind of was sitting watching the games and just thinking for this to be a pandemic, like we we can argue if sports should be played at all. Like that's a different conversation. But like I was kind of like in awe a bit of like like this is really working. Like I don't know if it's going to continue to work, but I was just impressed of how efficient it looked. You know, a month in to their bubble, and it led me to thinking like I don't know how the NFL thinks like it's going to work for them to be able to have an actual season. Like, I don't, I don't get how that's not thought out more. Am I, am I wrong in thinking that? No, the, the, the benefit, right. Of course, basketball has natural benefits in, in terms of you don't have to worry about 90 players or 80 players at this point in the season, but they were already playing a season, right? So they were able to call the rosters, um, call the teams that, that weren't in contention and develop this plan. Now, the plan has played out incredibly. Uh, this obviously took a, a lot of moving pieces. This took, you know, coordinating with Disney, uh, thousands of people involved on the ground. It was a significant undertaking. And uh, it's, a, it's a credit to them uh, that they haven't had something. But again, all it takes is one. Right. And like one mistake and the whole thing, the whole thing crumbles. And, and so you just, you just hope and pray. Cause it was, you know, I'm sitting there watching LeBron with my son last night, yeah. <laughs> you know, and a few months ago, I, I didn't think, you know, we, we might be able to do that. So it's, it, it, I, I'm glad. I, I hope that they're able to keep this up because it's, it, it honestly kind of shows, shows all of us a way that we can make this work. Uh, unfortunately it requires, you know, a, a billion dollar multi-billion dollar league yeah. <laughs> and uh multi-trillion dollar corporation uh but you know if if they could do it if, if we get a responsible federal government maybe we can accomplish this uh as a country yeah it's just amazing how you know after you watch for like five minutes it was like your brain just kind of clicked into i'm watching basketball yeah and man. it feels <laughs> it feels normal right you just felt normal for like a little hour or two you just watch basketball. No, you didn't have the crowd noise or nothing like that, but that's not really a big thing in basketball anyway. You had the little uh, 
Zoom on fans. <laughs> seats. Which I, I just allowed, just was cracking up at that. I, I hope, God, I hope the NFL does something like that because I just, I don't know, I, li- I like it. It's, it's just something funny about it. Uh, so I, I, I like the Zoom fans, man. Did you guys watch yeah, baseball did. this past weekend and the weird, the, the weird Fox thing? No. no. Oh. oh my God. So, like with TV, right? You try to tell the story, and baseball has all of these shots that traditionally tell a story. You know, like a high fly ball and you're looking at the ball and you see all the fans reacting, right? Yeah. Well, they're still trying to use those shots, but there's no people there. And so it just looks weird. So what Fox tried to do is they tried to have CG people in the stands and it was dreadful. <laughs> and so like, like if you just try to find a clip and watch it, it just, they look like, like if you, if y'all played Game Breaker 98 on the PlayStation original PlayStation, like I don't even call it the PlayStation. It was just the PlayStation like to, to date ourselves. But that's what it looked like. It looked like the fans from that old video game. And um, yeah, so the Zoom NBA fans, like if they could, you know, bump up their audio a bit and sync it up. Right. Uh, that's, that's the best case scenario. That's, that's, that's all we can hope for at this point. So what, yeah. what can the, I mean, I, I, and I know they're, the moving parts are extremely different, but what can the NFL take from the NBA in terms of, because like you said, it's, it's drastically different. You know, the, the NFL season hasn't started. So they're looking to hopefully play a full season. What are some things that maybe the NFL can take cues from the NBA that ha- that shows to, like to be working? Um, it's just such, it's such a different scenario uh, for, for what they're trying to do. I guess the first thing they could take, or or we could take, I guess, as long as this check still clears, is that uh, that sports works, right? You can do sports now. Um, But you have, if you have a plan and follow through and stick with the plan, now that it works and to the the benefit of the NFL and kind of to baseball's detriment, um, you know, we're not trying to play 60 games. We're we're trying to have 16 games uh, a week between each. And that should give you the time to keep to at least uh, know going in a couple days before that you hopefully don't have any positive players taking the field. Now, as for keeping those players, you know, team officials, coaches, uh, bus drivers, keeping everybody from contracting the virus in those two days. I mean, that's the question. Uh, How do you go about doing that? And uh, and we're going to find out. Uh, we're going to find out and that's because we just don't know we don't yeah. know how how it's going to work but um they, they have a plan the plan is constantly changing it should constantly change because we didn't know about this virus um you know until december of 2019 so you know plans are going to change uh, hopefully they uh, they find something that works because there's you know obviously we're, I'm i'm a little biased but you know, a whole a whole bunch of livelihoods uh, mm-hmm. depend on this. For sure. And uh, you know, absent a federal government that's going to take care of its citizens, uh, this you know this is this is the hand that we've been dealt. And you know, before we even get to the games, we have a good six weeks of this quote unquote training camp. Don't if you ever talk to Sean Payton, don't say this training camp because he is going to cuss you out. This is not. A, I mean, if you heard his his presser the other day, he is he is just not happy with this current setup. He's accepting it. He's like, hey, this is the this is the plan the NFLPA and the NFL came up with. This is what it is. But this ain't training camp. This is not training camp. It's the synthesis of training camp is what. So he's obviously looking at the challenge of trying to get players ready to play football without practicing playing football because they won't. They won't play any sort of football for the next six weeks. Yes, they have like 14 allowed padded practices, but it won't be any way near what you get in a preseason game. You know, you won't have the evaluation for the, you know, bottom of the roster guys or guys that show up every year in preseason. We all, you know, I can't stay in preseason until after like the first game, but it does have a use. Maybe not four games, but, you know, a, pre- a preseason or two does have a use. But it was understandably 
uh, canceled this year, which is completely understandable. Like, you know, I don't think anybody had any problems with it. But I'm just, yeah, I just can't get, I just, I'm so curious about what will football look like on week one, that Thursday night. You know, will it just be a slop fest? Will it, you know, will the refs be know, will the refs know what they're doing? And, you know, will the production, the whole production, they, you know, will, will they be ready? It's, it's uh, so many questions, man. Yeah, the refs is a great point, right? Because they need a preseason too. Right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And nobody can have more of an influence on the perception of the game being sloppy uh, than the guys in the stripes. And, uh, I mean, you guys know me. I, I, I would campaign for them to be replaced with artificial intelligence as soon as possible. <laughs> but um, but it's, it, it's going to be a lot for everybody. And I just think we're going to find out the value of coaching. Yeah. Um, and we're going to find out who's, who's really good at it, you know, who, who had an opportunity – uh, to fill their roster with players that understand and, and can receive uh, the message that they've sent. Because cause I think, like, especially now, uh, 150,000 people are dead. Uh, that rah-rah bullshit doesn't mean anything. You know, like, can you, put, can you put your players in a position to succeed and have them execute? Uh, all that other shit goes out of the window as far as I'm concerned. That, I mean, that's my belief. I, I know a lot of people believe firmly in it um, because it – it makes writing columns easier. Uh, but to me, like, you know, get the guy open, right? Hit the quarterback. <laughs> like, I don't know too much, but but that seems to make sense to me. And, no, I, I agree with you. I think, I mean, we I feel like we rag on him, we rag on him on this podcast a lot, but, like, coaches like Adam Gase are going to get exposed this season. Like, I mean <laughs> – any season. <laughs> Any season, really. But, like, if there's a season, <laughs> he's going to be looking helpless out there. Um, but we've already seen – and we've already seen players start to opt out of the season. And, of course, there's that, there's that blowback, you know. As soon as a player on the team opts out, you know, people are in their mention. And I, it's – Nothing and nothing. None of it is surprising, but I think I am more impressed. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but impressed to see so many of these players opting out. And I've said this. I don't even care if us if Saints player more Saints players start to opt out. Like it's a very them. Yes, they're athletes, but at the end of the day, just like me, you, all of us, we have families, and we have people that depend on us and care about us and they're prioritizing what's important to them over their profession. And I think we've only seen a very small amount of these opt-outs. Like I think there's still a wave to come that's going to surprise a lot of people. I, I think it's going to surprise people no matter what, right? Because everybody's having to make this personal decision. And I think, you know, a lot of it comes down to how your contract is structured, what your personal situation is. Um, but I, frankly, I'm relieved, right, that we've seen guys be able to make that choice because it, yeah. it makes me feel better about the game, right? Because th oh. there's a little bit of that guilt, right, that, that comes associated with, with what we do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like the, the game that we're playing and the impact that it has on people physically and emotionally and mentally um, – that some guys could say, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm in a good enough spot where I don't feel like I, I sh I'm forced to play. I can make a decision uh, to sit out this year, take that 150 k and see how this all plays out. Because it's an unknown, right? It's just it's an unknown of how many games there's going to be, how many people are going to get sick. Um, right. So if you could just zero out all those concerns and go with the known fact of, you know, your situation stays the same next year, you get 150 k um, I know a lot of people, if you, if you were able, right, if we were able to have a, a living wage for a majority of Americans, um, <laughs> people, there's a lot of people that would make that decision. Unfortunately, you know, we can't, most Americans can't live on, you know, 5% of their salary. Right. Uh, but I'm, I'm glad some NFL players are able and feel able to make that decision. Yeah. That's a, you know, it's not it's not an easy decision for them either because you got to think, especially players, you know, Dante Hightower, uh, 
you know, I mean, he, you know, he's a vet. He's, you know, solidified. But you think of Damian Williams, who's been around, bounced around the league a lot, you know, he had great success last year. But, you know, it's, it's you know, uh, or uh, uh, who was the other uh, Patriot, uh, Chung, Patriot Chung? Yeah, you know, that, yeah, he, you know, he's kind of at the end of his career. You know, he might not have a job next year. You know what I'm saying? So, those guys are really kind of just willing to take that risk for something bigger and something more important to them. I, I was, I said yesterday, like, I wouldn't be surprised if some just doing it just for like mental health. It just, mm-hmm. I just want to be home with my family, not have to worry about them constantly stressing about not only football, but if they're okay. I'm just going to be home and take this good year to get myself together, get my body together, let my body rest for a year. And, you know, then just read, you know, take a look at it next, next year. I made good enough, you know, I made money, you know, I'm not going to die starving, you know, over one year. So let me just take this year and try to just smell the roses for a minute. I wouldn't be surprised if some just are making that decision. I, I wouldn't knock it at all. Me, I'd do it. One thing that, that popped out to me, right? So, George Kittle's set to make less than $3 million this year, mm. right? And they're trying to negotiate a contract. If, if I'm George Kittle, do I, do I, do I want to play Uh-oh. in this pandemic for $3 million, right? When, hey. when, I could, when I could be due 20, 25, 35, 40 Man. in a cash check, you know? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's put like a decision – on, on a lot of guys and um, you know, timing is timing is everything. And, and not everybody's in a spot where they feel like they can opt out. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's a decision to make and, and I'm just, I'm just glad guys have an opportunity to make it. Oh, for sure. I, I'm, I'm and you know, they, is this, if there's like this, is this soft deadline still supposed to be like August 4th or do we know when this quote unquote deadline actually is? Well, when they, whenever they get things finalized, there's going to be a lag period, right? Um, so every day that it's not, it gets pushed back a bit. And we've already seen, I sent this to Ryan through text message earlier, like basically like the entire Tampa Bay's Bucks like running back room has like been decimated by, by COVID. Um, and I just... I mean, I don't want it to happen, but, like, I just think realistically, like, that is a very reasonable thing that may happen during the season. And I think – and I don't know the difference of what the procedures are compared to the NFL and Major League Baseball, but the Major League Baseball has a mess on their hands right now to the point where they're potentially just going to shut down their entire season. Obviously, they're playing – they're trying to play 60 games. And if anyone's wanting football to happen, you know – they don't you don't want it to go the route of what major league baseball has has had happened to them over the last couple of days no and and the thing is that's a possibility i mean that's a that's an nba possibility as well yeah, right if for somebody sure. if somebody sure. gets in there uh this this virus can spread and people got on lou williams like which i guess if if you're doing something that you've agreed not to do that's one thing but you can catch COVID at Wingstop. COVID doesn't care if you're at a strip club. Did you, you see those wings Walmart? though? Like shit. <laughs> wings. wings look good, boy. I shit. <laughs> I mean, all wings look good, but I mean, you know, like Magic City is known for its wings, and, and Lou knows he's he's on his name's on the menu. You know, like that's what? that's his spot. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like Lou has Lou has his own wings at Magic City, so like. Um, yeah, but my thing is like, so Sugar Man of the Vikings, right? Their infectious disease coordinator and planner, like, yeah. like yes. he tested positive. So all this moralizing about like, you know, like what are the players going to do? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This the, the virus doesn't care. It, it, it can it can happen anywhere. And so like, yeah, baseball's in a situation, and, and we're all kind of you know everybody's in the, the same situation now as far as. Could baseball's planning and handling have been better? Absolutely. You know, they, they, you know, Manfred and the owners, you know, they were trying to extract basically a loan from the players uh, before this all started. And so we see that where their motivations were. Um, But it's, we're we're all kind of in the same boat and it, it just, it doesn't take much for this virus to spread. 
man, I kind of want to switch gears because I have NFL Network on right now, and they're talking about uh, Antonio Brown. His suspension finally came down. Uh, he's going to get eight games. So when if he does sign with the team, his eight game suspension starts right there. So theoretically, uh, you know, a team could sign him now, and they could, you know, he could work out, you know, in training camp and you know get himself ready, and then he'll serve his eight games, and he could be back. If the season goes on that long, you know, he'll be back kind of ready for a stretch run. Uh, What's what's your whole take on Antonio Brown, the, you know, the tweets, the antics, the videos, you know, him coming, work out for the Saints last year, showing up with his entourage and a a music video. (laughs) Video. um, Yeah, music video cameras, you know. What's your take? I mean, because the dude is a dog as a wide receiver. Right. Like, there's just no question. You know, the last right. game he played, like, with the Patriots, he was a dog. So, that's not even a question. But what you're getting with it, oh, man, I don't know. Well, here's here's my thing. And where I've come on Antonio Brown, like, he, if, if he harassed, intimidated, and allegedly assaulted a woman. That's what I care yes. about. Yes, yes, absolutely. The tweets? The tweets? I mean, like, we got coworkers with shitty tweets, right? Everybody knows somebody <laughs> with shitty and weird tweets and people who make weird decisions. Like, Baker Mayfield, you know, posted that conspiracy doctor on Instagram for a brief moment and then deleted it, right? That was, that <laughs> was yesterday. That is the like, least surprising thing ever from him, but, but anyway. So, like, I the other stuff, like, I, like I, maybe I'm bad and maybe I've just – been around too many colonists and you just run counter to their feelings but like i don't i why would i care about that stuff does yeah. does he does he abuse women yeah let's let's talk about that right we know like, that like, like we know he does he so 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 yeah. so then no like if that's the case like if that's if that's what you claim to be important if you're a team then no like zero tolerance means zero tolerance uh, but if a team's, you know, like, oh, you know, we want to have him, but those tweets, then, then what, what the fuck are you like? W- w- no, like, but why I, are you, I, why are you prioritizing I, I, that? Well, I think we have good evidence, and there are NFL teams that don't care about <laughs> the salt or none of that. You know, they, if if you there's a slightest, you're talented and you could play. You know, they're willing to accept a lot. Yeah, I mean that's. I just I wish, no matter what, right, that a team would be responsible for the conversation surrounding the thing um, that that's being discussed, right? Whether it's Antonio Brown or anybody else, right? If if it requires a conversation, then a team should be able to have that conversation about you know how women are treated, um, you know how violence against women is perpetuated. Right. But the the other stuff, I mean, that's that's just that's just 2020, man. Like we, we got access to people and, and people have access to us and, and they can communicate in a myriad of ways. And uh, Antonio Brown is a weird dude. And <laughs> I don't you know, I don't know what's going on in his head, but it's, it's not standard. But there's more there's more weird people in America than Antonio Brown. Oh, yeah. I'll say that. I, I just care about the, the way he treats people and uh, what statement that says about a team. He's an incredible football player. He should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, you know, we can have a discussion about uh, treating women incorrectly and throwing women out of windows like Jim Brown did. Um, <laughs> if, if, you wanna, if you wanna haul those guys out of the Hall of Fame, I'm cool with that. But um, mm-hmm. as, as long as Jim Brown is in, <laughs> then Antonio Brown should be in. Yeah. So kind of speak on the you know you're always a voice in terms of social justice or social injustice i should say and a couple of weeks ago you had an opportunity um using the nfl network as your platform to to really speak on it and as long as i've known you um you, you know not that you know but I've, that was the proudest i've like man that's like that's my guy yeah. like yeah you know, for real regardless of all the football shit because at the end of the day that doesn't mean that doesn't mean anything like you know one i was i guess happy and surprised that the nfl network even gave you that platform but the way you utilized it um 
was tremendously proud of you of you know of the panel and, and everything that you spoke on during it. How did that <clears throat> how did that come about and um like just what were your thoughts going in before you before you did it? Well, um so right after Sage, my daughter uh was born, right? Of course the the protest had started and everything yep. was was kind of going and, and they were and the league was trying to have discussions, uh like company wide discussions and like, so I'm sitting there holding her. She's like two weeks old and we had like a company, like two days old, excuse me. We had like a company wide Zoom call. Uh, people were just telling, you know, just a few people telling their experiences about being black in America. And um, I had, I, I just kind of popped on the Zoom. Like I, I turned on my camera and I just started talking, like honestly. And it, it was, it was just, it was like, you know, and, in 2016, we had an opportunity. We had, you know, conversational space that was created by Colin Kaepernick. And because we were afraid of retaliation from ownership, uh, we took a certain way. And uh, that harmed us. That, that harmed our, you know, our reputation. Uh, that, that harmed a, a lot of people who work here who felt silence. And, uh, and, it, and it sucks, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so a few people reached out to me. And they were, you know, they they wanted me to be a part uh, of these discussions because, like, honestly, like I'm, I was I was scrolling Instagram one night, and I, I'm just seeing the the way that different people are handling things, um, you know, with regards to having the discussion, and so like I, I'm looking and I'm I'm seeing like, you know, people laying on the ground and other stuff, and like I get it, like everybody handles things differently, yeah, but that's that's not how I handle things. And so I, um, you know, I opened my notes app, I'm holding my daughter and I just started writing things. I, I put out a 10 minute video, uh, just, yeah. you know, like that everything dope. that I, everything that I thought and, you know, people took notice of that. And so they were like, Hey, we, we, we're going to have you host some of these panels. And, um, uh, it's been great for me. It's that, that was like the crowning achievement of honestly my career, uh, because, you know, it's important to me, you know, I, I got to. I got to talk about Breonna Taylor. I got to, talk, you yeah. know, I got to talk about white supremacy. We had Justin bro. Jackson on. And like he, that's he, huge, though, bro. Like, talking, <laughs> yeah. Like, think Man. about that. Like just like three, two years ago, you would not. And like that's crazy. So I was so, like, we've, like, we've come a long way. way. Yeah, yeah, man. Like that's and for you, but for you to get that, I know you don't want to make it about yourself, but for you, like I always thought you had like such a this powerful voice, like literally, you know, Obama esque. You know, powerful voice. <laughs> yeah, you, For sure. Like, For, yeah. Like, like, you know, you have that. It's America. Like, so important. <laughs> Bro, I always say, like, if they open now. the cast, like, you got to get, you got to put your name in. If they ever cast for that movie, you just got to you know, just try it, bro. No, like, no, no, Ryan. No. <laughs> Ryan? Adam, um, <laughs> what we're talking about is America. And bro, it's important to me. <laughs> Hey man, can uh can I can we pause for a second? They, yeah, they yeah. want me to uh they want me to track something. Yeah. yeah. So we just had to take a break, like a little pause, so this man can do like some some hits. We I wish we could have recorded it for you, but with me and Ryan just saw how the sausage was made. That this man is talented. <laughs> Stop. Stop, that, man. That boy, that boy good. That boy good. <laughs> Just reading words on the screen, man. We all do it. <laughs> not, not like, not like that. <laughs> not, not. Um, so we were we were talking about you know the the voice that you that you got to share with the, the social injustice thing, and it it would just know it was it was appreciated. I guess is is the best way that I can word it or describe it is that it is appreciated and. Um, you, you know, like Ryan said, like your voice resonates and for you to use it and have the platform to use it how you did, um, you know, that's important for all of us, you know, black men in America living in this country, dealing with the things that we deal with on a daily basis. Um, it's crucial. It's crucial for, for, for you in that moment to have the opportunity that you had was was big and, and know that, you know, both me because First thing I sent to Ryan, you know, I believe I texted Ryan. I was like, "Shit, man, look, look at our, look at our dude, like, <laughs> like that's that's big time, man." So that that means a lot to me, y'all. Like it, it really does. Because 
you know, you, you only have so many opportunities. And um, I've always kind of wanted to, to speak to these things. And yeah. I remember, you know, starting, starting back as a reporter in, in Dothan, Alabama, you know, I, there were a lot of things I didn't look at. You know, I, I took the police's word a lot of times and yeah. our district attorney's word a lot of times. And I made a lot of mistakes that, that people currently make. You know, the, the people with the police involved shooting, you know, yeah. officer involved shooting. Was, no, they, they shot somebody. Right. And yeah. um, it's a, uh, I've come a long way. Hopefully, you know, more people can come a long way. Um, and most importantly, like all the, all the, the young dudes out there who are just on the internet, you know, feeling alone, like feeling crazy. Like if, if I could give them something that says there's nothing wrong with me, like I'm okay. You know, I, I'm not genetically predisposed to violence or whatever racist bullshit that they try to put in our heads. Um, that's, that's what means the most to me. And so like, um, I'm glad that I didn't have to get fired to, to say the things that I wanted to say. Right. We could just, uh, we can just say that. And, uh, more, fewer people are worried about that, uh, retaliation now, which is great, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Still got a long way to go, obviously. Oh, right? oh, yeah. Cause we, I mean, honestly, like, so we were having, we were having a discussion. Um, they brought in an implicit bias trainer. Oh, Lord. Uh, and you know me, like the very first thing I do is, is I'm like, why, why is implicit just in there to make racists feel better? <laughs> right? Like what? Uh, like, so I did, I was trying not to, to engage the exercise in good faith, you know, but they were asking these questions like, you know, uh, what can we do to, to empower women in the workplace? And, and I'm like, pay them. Right. <laughs> Like, like, what are the, what are the, I mean, this is for everybody, like, not just the the league, like every office in America, like, if you want to empower women, uh, pay them, you know, Uh, make them feel like they don't have to work for less. Um, Some of these questions that that we've been trying to answer here recently, they they got an obvious answer. And and I think more people are are coming to that. But um, we still we still got some ways to go. I just, everybody's got a long way to go. Um, like everybody from sea to shining sea. Personally, I've got a long way to go. Um, yeah. But, but as, as long as, as long as people recognize it and realize that and just kind of ignore all the outside noise, you know, just, just like all the people that are in players mentions were, were the players opting out. Oh my God. Like the, like the people getting at Nate Solder who, came back from testicular cancer right and his child has cancer and they're in his mentions talking about like him not being good or whatever That's imagine like, fu- like that god I, it just it's so it's so infuriating like i like you're just hearing stuff like that it's like this is why our country where it be the pandemic where it be racial whatever like this is why our country is where it is it's like there's this individualistic like why the fuck should Nate Solder like put his health and his his kids' health for an employer, like for your entertainment? Like, I it just blows my mind. It shouldn't, because I I know like I know this like I know what this is what we live in, but like that is such a selfish fucking mentality that I just can't relate to. Like it just boggles my mind. And here's like if you're mad that you think that Nate Solder's being paid too much money, that's not Nate's fault. Direct your ire elsewhere, man. Like if Nate's overpaid, then a whole lot of people are overpaid because we, (laughs) we watched this dude play football and then a bunch of men who make a lot of money got in a room and decided uh, what his value was. And that's on them. Them. The 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 fact is somebody had to write Nate Soldier. So who wrote the check? <laughs> you know? So yeah, like, man, I, we just we just gotta learn what voices deserve attention, and whether it's the people talking about boycotting the league whenever we 
post a social justice segment or the people who are getting itchy and players uh, mentions, uh, we just got to understand that if we lose those people, okay. Um, What decisions are you making and and what's right and wrong? And I think in the past, uh, we were very concerned as a league uh, about those people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, Look, I mean, they're humans, right? I, I, I want to give those people universal health care. You know, I, I, wanna, I, I want I uh, want a jobs guarantee for people. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing for those people to have the best lives in the world. But what I'm not going to do is sacrifice my integrity uh, for the pleasure of their opinion. And, and I don't think anybody should. It's, it's funny. You, not funny. You brought up the implicit bias training. Um, so was it last year? I was, yeah, last year. So I, so for people who don't know this, like obviously I, I'm a social worker, so I work for the county. And it was a mandate that every social worker, I believe also every police officer in LA County take that training. Doesn't um, work. <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't. Like I, I, I remember doing it and I was like, okay, okay. like, like what is this gonna solve? Like races are still gonna be racist. Like it, it I don't. It, it, it makes no sense. I really like you're as a. I, I was thinking as a county, you're paying buku bucks for this training for what? Like it. Very perplexing. Very perplexing. Plausible, plausible deniability. There you go. Right. <laughs> it's 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 institutional it, ass covering. Yeah, and, and it's become industry too. Oh, for sure. Oh yeah, that's 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 why um, that's why a lot of people were probably surprised to see you know people working for criminal justice reform or whatever. When we started talking about defunding the police, they were like, "Hold hold up, hold up now, wait wait wait." It's like that Andre yeah. the Giant gif where he's like, "Hold up now, wait 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 wait," <laughs> and, and, be, because that's their money, right? The, the police are giving them that money to to do this bullshit training that doesn't work, where it's like you know, baby's first introduction to races or, or whatever. And it's like, now hold on now. If you if you violate this person's uh, civil rights, uh, that's bad. Well, well, no shit, it's bad. Like, you shouldn't need training to know that. Um, aren't you supposed <laughs> to be a police officer? It, 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 it's just it's so dumb. And, and like, and God bless the dude who was giving us this, this training. And, and I know, you know, he's, you, you got to get in where you can. I mean. Uh, was, he, you know. the, was he black? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure I know who it was. And, and like, you know, you know, more, more power to you, but um, he brought up these examples and it was like, uh, you know, unconscious racism or unconscious sexism. And it's, it's just like, this is America, you know, a, a country founded by uh, men who raped their, their human property. Speak on right? it. it, it why are we talking about unconscious sexism when it is latent, right? It's a, it's available. It's present. It, it exists in every corner of the country. Like, why are we giving these people a pass to say like, Oh, Hey, you know, maybe they just didn't know what they were doing. They know exactly what they're doing. Fuck out of here. And, and like, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I think about these agencies, um, everybody who's, who's got all of this data, they know how much black people are getting paid. They know how much women are getting paid. Um, and they're putting out these, you know, these messages about equality. Well, show us, you know, sh- show us where the equality is. I'm sorry if, if y'all can hear my child yelling. It's all, uh, he, all good, man. Last like, last podcast, there was a murder going on to the podcast, and Ryan just kept talking. So you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> we lost somebody. <laughs> yeah, you're coming back. It was. I was like, is is there Hannibal? Is Hannibal over at your house right now? Like what? <laughs> At, at least at least it's not the birds right <laughs> it's funny i didn't i didn't even the, the birds like I, I don't know they were just like ambient noise like i didn't even yeah, <laughs> they didn't even know. bother me <laughs> they didn't bother you they didn't bother me when i was doing it and then i listened to that thing it's fucking huey dewey and louie just giving me the business the whole damn time <laughs> sorry i didn't mean i didn't mean to cut you off sorry no i i you know i, I was off on a tangent anyway but it's it's um i just don't know why we call this stuff unconscious or yeah. implicit bias just call it bias training right yeah like, don't 
stop slapping me in the face yeah. uh, and just tell me. In fact, like if you want to train a police department on implicit bias, show them their own fucking statistics, Ooh. right? Of, of, of who they're pulling over, who they're putting in jail, the outcomes of those people they're putting in jail, oh. and the sentences the people they put in jail are getting uh, versus uh, the sentences that, that some other people uh, might not be getting. Uh, because of their access to power and influence and, and most importantly, whiteness. Um, you know, that would be some bias training that I would tune in on, right? If, if it's, I, I don't even need the employees to be on the call, right? Just, just make, make all the employees say you work at, at uh, I don't know, uh, some tech company, uh, Slam, Slam Fast 88 or whatever. Um, you, you work at sounds like slim fast you like did <laughs> Z, Z, xenon x plan or some shit right say you work at xenon x plan and, and you get your board uh on a call with some bias trainer and they just go through the spreadsheets of who's getting paid what and what their job title is and how long they've been working at the country that and at the company that would be some bias training i, I, I would want to see but this thing where it's like you know sometimes people refer to derrick henry or Cam Newton as a beast, and they would never refer to Christian McCaffrey in that way. Like, <laughs> man, I, like I know, I know what racism is, and, I, and like, and it get, I get it, right? The dude is speaking to a corporate audience, and he needs for his presentation to be appealing to the corporate structure within America, which is going to look and feel a certain way. And I get that. I get that. Um, everybody's got to make a living. It's capitalism. But but uh, man, if that shit doesn't feel insulting, <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine having something like that at my job here in Alabama. Boy, that shit would <laughs> man, it would be mayhem at my job, <laughs> at my company, man. Because uh, yeah, it, it's different. It's different here. I will say that. So, Stew to a perfection. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. stew. <laughs> um, you brought up Cam. So the last time you hopped on the podcast, at that time, Cam didn't have a job. You know, since then, he's been signed by the Patriots because, of course, he's been signed by the Patriots. Um, just what were, your, what were your thoughts when you heard that and, you know, your your outlook for Cam as the Patriots starter? Because I'm not going to even entertain the idea that anything other than that, if he's healthy, will be the outcome. Yeah, I I actually I had to I had to go to the meme generator, right? I, I logged on to Twitter uh because it was I would say it was the biggest like NFL signing news of the summer, right? And so I, I hop on the tweet machine and I pull up the meme generator and I get that American chopper meme because I have to find out how I feel about this. <laughs> because I hadn't I hadn't wanted the Patriots to win a football game in twenty plus years, right? <laughs> And then, you know, there's this quarterback that admittedly that I had a conflicted relationship with, but I honestly would like for him to succeed. And so I had to like, I had just had to go back and forth with myself on how I felt about it. And ultimately, I think the conclusion that I came to ultimately was, right, so when Jerry Richardson owned the Panthers, he bought in, um, and I'm blanking on this dude's name, but he was the the lie of the year recipient. He was a GOP strategist, right? Um, Jerry Richardson brought this guy in to like teach Cam how to talk about race. Mm. And it was like the most insidious thing. And actually Dan Snyder brought him in as well to consult on the Slurn uh, team name. Um, but anyway, like, so Jerry Richardson brought that guy in to like brainwash Cam yet I still wanted the Panthers to win all those games. And so I, I, I can't like go back on, on myself and be like, even though I hate the Patriots, uh, that's like, they're somehow different, right? Their ownership structure or anything is, is any, any worse or better than <laughs> Jerry Richardson's. Now, you know, yeah. Robert Kraft wasn't, you know, racially harassing and sexually harassing people, hopefully. Um, but um, other things. no, he just go. He just get a little, mas- a little massage. That's co- completely different. <laughs> what? <laughs> am, I, am I? Am I lying? Just get a little massage. <laughs> Say it, man. <laughs> I 
I think we lost Patrick. No, I'm still here. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to keep my job, man. Uh, but, like, and so, like, uh, just just evaluating that and, and looking at it, like, I don't I, – I want Cam – I want Cam to be successful, and so that means I, I want the Patriots to be successful. Uh, if Cam goes down, <laughs> it's a wrap. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I just I, – I hope he has every opportunity. Uh because like he was so good, and Mike Shula was his offensive coordinator, and I think Mike we talked about Shula. this before. Yeah, like man, I, I I look forward to him having uh, competent people around him because he's, <laughs> I mean, he's the best college football player I've ever seen. Oh yeah, like, uh, it's so interesting. I can't wait to see what they do. I mean, look, I he's mean, getting, I, I he's getting paid peanuts. Also, nothing. Him, between him and Jameis, it's like. Base paid two million. Like it's, just, like it's hilarious. Like if you a year ago I would have told you that you would have slapped me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. Um, there's there's I feel like there's there's so much, you know, because I remember when I proposed like this talking to Greg, like hey let's do the show together. He was like, oh, you know, Ryan does a Greg voice better than I do, but like maybe we should wait till like there's actual like training camp. And I'm like, man, like y'all y'all guys get busy. Like there might not be a chance when training camp actually starts, which is like August 14th is when most teams can actually have pra- padded practices. I said, let's let's just get up and just there's so much that we can talk about just in general. Like there's so much going on in the world. It doesn't have to be about football, it, you know. And I feel like we always have a a space to do that. Um, I don't know if you saw this news, Patrick, but the news in terms of like Universal saying that they're going to have movies in the theaters and then like 17 days after that, they're going to transition them to be available for video on demand. Like, I feel like uh, all of us, all of us consume movies, pop culture, kind of on the same level. That's a completely game changer in terms of streaming streaming options and video on demand um tied to movies in in the industry like that yeah it's it's gonna be huge and like i used to go to a lot of movies and then became a parent and now a parent uh, over again and, and you know a lot of that shit's out of the window and yeah. so it's it's tough for us to get in a the theater anyway um but this is going to change things for non-parents you know yeah. um Whereas, like something just just something random, like what's a movie that that came out like that that um, that extraction movie with yeah. Thor in it from uh, on yeah, Netflix? Yeah. yeah, that's something that if it came out in a theater, you know, in two thousand seven, you know, I, I would have paid some money and I'd have gone sat and sat down and watched it in the theater. Um, yeah, th- those days are gone now oh, for, for, for for those movies. Like I, I just don't see anybody. Uh, paying for all that popcorn and, and going in there and sitting and, and doing that. Like it's, and, it's just going to be blockbusters only. And also, can I just say that it's just like, it just like it's different in terms of like the Gulf South, maybe in terms of heat, California movie prices in a movie experience. <laughs> bruh. <laughs> the economic you're not, decision. You know? you're, you're, not, you're not getting out of there for less than $70 for two people. Bruh. You're just not. If if you're trying to enjoy it, I mean, if you want to have a drink, I mean, we're 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 passing the bill at, no, at this yeah. point. It's 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 insane <laughs> to watch a movie, <laughs> yeah. right? Like no. they don't even have to make anything. They're gonna play the movie anyway. They don't need you. <laughs> so like, I, there's a rule back before this. Like when like when I would take my daughter to the movie, like she understood. Like we're we'll get food after the movie. But there's there's no popcorn buying, there's no drink buying. <laughs> We're watching the movie, and then afterwards we'll grab lunch. Like she knows the rules. Like <laughs> I don't mess around. <laughs> Economically, it's different in California with the movie going experience. Um, but it seems like trolls completely changed the game in terms of and trolls and as well as obviously the coronavirus just in terms of what that what the industry may look like going forward which is which is kind of fascinating to see very yeah and I, I wish there were some i guess if there if this was like an infinity war situation 
uh, if they would have approached it differently, right? Right. Um, like Jurassic World Dominion doesn't necessarily move me. No. <laughs> and, <laughs> in in the way of of something that I've been waiting for 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 a long time. So it's, you know, uh, I think a lot of it says something about the movies that they were making. Um, yeah. But it, it also says a lot about the situation. Um, I, I mean that. You know the uh, that that Tenet movie, the uh, yeah. <laughs> Christopher Nolan. Yeah, the Chris Nolan thinky movie. Um, <laughs> you go, you I, I would have gone. I would have gone and, and, and seen that in the theaters. But, for sure, you know, all, all of us, all of us would. <laughs> but it's just like you know, like maybe I, I carve out two and a half hours and, and I watch the movie at home. Ready to to break it down with my wife, you know. Afterwards, <laughs> get 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 out a flow chart and be like, you know, like now how did how did this scene make you feel, and was that what the whole movie was about? Um, you know? But did that like, really happen? Or? Yeah, it's like, man, like okay, like I get it, Chris. Like you know, you're a smart guy, but fuck, smart, man. Man. like I just I just want to watch the movie. Oh, like, <laughs> I was I was. So I rewatched Inception like a month and a half ago and I texted Ryan. I said, man, I consider myself a pretty smart dude, but like, man, (laughs) there's, there's a line, right. And, and you, you want to try to get in the middle of it. There's like, there's like Zack Snyder beating you over the head with Superman is Jesus. Oh my God. So that's, that's one side of it. And then the other side is like, legitimately not explaining whether or not something happened in your movie or yeah. like whether or not your movie happened. <laughs> yeah. And so if you could find the middle ground of like treating people like they're idiots or treating people like they are actually inside of your brain, uh, then, then that's good. And I, and I think maybe that's, that's what we, we could have hoped for with this movie, you know? And, and so I, I'm just, uh, I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also looking forward to to you know, getting out my notebook and, and yeah. thinking super hard about a movie. That, that's part of the Chris Nolan experience. Right oh, for there. sure, hundred <laughs> percent, without question. It's like we'll go even with Memento. Memento is like part of the fun of watching that movie. Is like you gotta watch it real hard, you know, because it's going in reverse, <laughs> but it's not in reverse because you know. <laughs> but hey, that's, that's I love it. Um, any anything else you you got for for Patrick Ryan? No, man. I, I just I uh, just wanted to ask you. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that I'm sure just like everything else, everything is in flux. But as far as the NFL Network, you know what you guys got planned, you know, going forward with quote unquote training camp and all that stuff. Yeah, it's just it's just inside training camp. Uh, you know, going starting again next week. I, I'm doing Friday's show. Um, we're just you know trying to give everybody everything we can. Uh, from the training camps going on, the, the access that the little access that we get, which really isn't any more access than everybody else, you know, we just we just got some folks that that are grinding, you know, trying to tell some stories, and so like that's that's what we try to do. Uh, you know, we know people have options for how they get their training camp stuff, but but we want to be personable. We we want to be accessible, especially to me. Like if anybody wants to tweet at me, it's at Patrick Claybon. You know, we'll. You know, we'll 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 chop it up. We'll talk football. I may block you uh, if I don't like what you have to say. Uh, yeah. But you know, that's that's these guys too. Right? <laughs> so it's just like uh, anybody can get it, uh, especially uh, especially in these times, right? <laughs> but it's um, yeah, we we got ITC. Um, not sure a, a week out what teams will, you know, give us access. But uh, we're, we're gonna be everywhere we can uh, next Friday and. You know, also on the shows I'm not doing, um, yeah. you know, starting on Monday at uh, at one o'clock Eastern. And it's, you know, that's that's what we do is, you know, it's, it's like sharks. We swim, baby. And, and yeah. it's time for us to start swimming. Hopefully we can keep swimming and the water isn't infected. Uh, but, but we're going to do it as long as we can. Yeah. The, the last thing I have for you is, is there anything just in particular that you're and I know the access might be limited, but anything in particular that you're looking forward to for any team in training camp that you're just kind of keeping your eye out on? Um, 
my dude, my dude, Mitchell Trubisky, right? Oh boy. I, I'm a, I, oh I'm a boy. sucker. Oh I'm Lord. a sucker. I'm a sucker for a training montage, man. Like y'all know me. Like I, I was brought up on '80s action movies. Yeah. And and like having a messed up shoulder, like it really affects your ability to play quarterback. Yeah. And I'm looking at this dude, you know, doing his one arm chin ups and, and and other stuff, and I'm like, okay, like you know, put some put some hearts on fire under this, and like this is it. This is the training montage. And he's, you know, you know, saying all the the tropes and the chips on his shoulders and oh, he's motivated and chip he's alert, extra hard. I, I just like if if you're healthy, like show us, man, like show us what you showed, uh, you know, the the seven people on earth who thought you were the best quarterback <laughs> in their draft. Um, you know, show show us what you showed them, and uh, maybe he'll beat out, you know, big thick, big. Uh, uh, what's his what? name? Uh, Nick Foles. Nick Foles. <laughs> like maybe, maybe that he'll he'll beat him out, and and I'm just I'm ready to watch it, man, because it's there's not a lot of quarterback battles, you know, like no, yeah, there isn't. Like, like Justin Herbert is uh, a person. Um, <laughs> Are we sure? Uh, maybe I, I don't expect him to. I mean, I'm sure he's he's a human, you know, like he's he's got arms and legs and stuff. Um, Tyrod's going to be starting there. Um, you know, maybe there's going to be, hopefully there's no injuries, uh, but you, but yeah, you, re- you, you're really, you really think that they're going to roll Tyrod out there week, week one. Did, did you see Oregon play football? <laughs> I'm just, yo, we've had this conversation. Like he is one of the least uninspiring quarterback top prospects. I've watched in a very, very long time. I get it. But he also was, I don't know. I don't know if they would start week. I just, I don't know. I mean, maybe they don't want to win football games. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's that possibility. Uh, but something that is I, fascinating to me, though, is what happens in Miami with Tua. Like, fascinating from yeah. the aspect of, you know, we, I think we heard all pre-draft like the injuries and the surgery and all that. But like, it sounds like he's gonna be you know, fully ready to go for training camp. And yeah, he's ready. He ready he's to ready. Go. And I'm and which part of me is like, as someone who was a fan of his in college, I'm like, I'm like, I'm excited to potentially see him play and flourish and all that. But then our other part of me is like, as a, as a team, do you, do you be on the safe side and maybe let Ryan, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick get five, six, you know, whatever to just make sure he's fully up. I don't know. That's just, I think that's going to be fascinating to see what happens in Miami. I know uh, in his last couple of years at Alabama, uh, Tua was actually playing hurt, right? He was coming yeah. back from ankle surgery. Mm-hmm. He was literally playing hurt. Um, he shouldn't do that. Um, yeah. Nobody should do that. But if he's healthy, yeah, like you, you play him. I, I don't believe that anybody gets better by not doing something. Right. Um, right. And, and so like if, if you're going to – and if you want him to sit behind somebody and, and learn and be safe – like watching Ryan Fitzpatrick play football is not going to be safe. For <laughs> this dude uh, plays every play. Like he is indestructible. Like he is, you know, yeah. old man Logan out there. Uh, and it's just like, Hey man, like chill out. And like, he led the team in rushing last year. And that's, that's a dude. That's wild, know? man. That's wild. He, he that's may crazy. be, he may be my favorite person to come out of the Ivy league ever. Like, ever yeah. uh you know barry obama right if he didn't drone strike so many people and fought back a little bit like maybe he would be up there but like it's um it, it's a lot but nobody nobody should do that like that's not a safe way to play quarterback and especially uh tua uh no. so yeah if if tua can play um then he should be playing like period that's that's he's a spectacular football player man and i know he had a lot of talent around him uh, but let's not ding him for it. Like you no, saw him he, make plays. Oh, like there's, there's a video of yeah. him making plays against good football players. Uh, uh, more of it than Justin Herbert. But like, Lord. yeah. So like, uh, play him, and good things happen. Well, that's all I got. That's all I got too, Patrick. Um, you know, we don't want to keep you too much from, you know, from your family. You, you guys go enjoy the rest of the evening. Oh, I will. I, last thing for me, because I know you're, you're further away. Did the earthquake wake you up? Not at all. Okay. Just, Not at all. 
nobody <laughs> nobody in the house woke up my son frequently you know he has dreams where i'm like asking him to take a nap and he wakes up mad at me in the middle of the night like, <laughs> no like, you don't take your little ass back to sleep <laughs> i can't i mean i'm not gonna call him little because yeah he's, just... he's gonna he's gonna be dunking on me pretty soon but like um nobody woke up like we're just I mean, to that point, you were, you're like deep, like you weren't close to the epicenter. I'm like 15 miles away from the epicenter. And I thought that it was it. (laughs) I was like, oh, this is, this is the one, huh? Like, it's it's over. (laughs) Screw that shit. (laughs) 4.30 in the morning, apartment is just shaking. And you could hear it. It's it's violent. And I woke up like I was like, all right. I, my my daughter was in the bedroom sleeping on the couch. I go in there to try to get her. She's she's out. Like she, I was like, really, kid? Like this could be it? Like you're not gonna wake up? Um, that is something that I do not enjoy living out here. It is absolutely <laughs> terrifying. Most one of the most help it. You know, for, so for my, you know, my white listeners or whatever who might listen to this podcast who have experienced an earthquake, if you take that helplessness feeling that you have in an earthquake, that's kind of how it is being black in America, just as a nice little <laughs> analogy to, 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 to tie everything. Like, like at any point, the forces that control you could literally suck you under and there's no shit you could do that's about it. it. Night, night time. That's it. So it's, I'll it's <laughs> no Leave sirens, on. no warnings. No, hey, nothing. Do, do, do you, did did your earthquake app go off? The no. the the city one that's supposed to like no give you some heads up. No. <laughs> nope. Oh well. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> Too bad. So j- just people who made it through the end of this podcast, a little just analogy to kind of walk walk away at the end. Um, we are gonna get it set up in August. We're gonna do the Megapod. I don't know how but we're gonna align it it's gonna be patrick it's gonna be greg we're gonna get kevin patra on here we're gonna do a megapod probably after training camp has started so we actually do have some football to talk about um it's it's a mission of mine so we'll get that set up you can always follow patrick on twitter at patrick claybon um i felt i got excited because i finally passed i got to like my thousand block on twitter um which was like a my, 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 monumental occasion for me. So I had to celebrate that. Um, but don't, don't try to follow me on Twitter. You can follow Ryan on Twitter um, <laughs> at that boy, at that boy wolf. Come on. Um, as, as always, Patrick, man, we appreciate you coming on again. You're like family. Um, and we just, we just keep pushing, man. With, with this, this life we have right now, this situation, we just keep pushing. Oh yeah. Appreciate you guys, man. Thank you, brother. With that, we're out. Peace. Enjoy all your favorite sports like never before at BetMGM. Sign up using code Hawkeye and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if you don't win your first bet. When you register with BetMGM, you'll get instant access to a variety of parlay selection features, live betting options, and the best daily promotions in the business. And with BetMGM at your fingertips, every play and every game matters more than ever. Remember to use code Hawkeye and receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if you don't win your first bet. Place your money line prop or parlay bets with the king of sports books today bet mgm and GameSense remind you to play responsibly bet mgm.com for terms 21 plus only iowa only new customer offer subject to eligibility requirements rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days please gamble responsibly gambling problem call 1-800-BETS-OFF this is the story of the one as head of maintenance at a concert hall He knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Grainger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Grainger, for the ones who get it done.